Welcome to Imagine Wealth Without Risk, the podcast that guides you to fulfilling your dreams through guaranteed, secure investing. Here's your host, Ted Thomas. Welcome, everyone. Uh, This is Ted Thomas, and this podcast is all about wealth without risk, and really, imagine wealth without risk. I'm going to give you some ways to do that today that you're really going to enjoy, and uh, my special guest is going to be a gentleman who I've known for a number of years, and wait till you hear some of the things he's going to tell you, because he's really going to surprise you, but the wealth without risk angle to my life has always been buy tax lien certificates where you you could have a safe, secure investment. Then I grew that into buying tax defaulted properties where we could get properties for 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. But I really want you to learn about creating wealth in many different ways. And so my guest today is Roger Salim. And Roger and I go back, I'm gonna say 10 years, but I'm always making a mistake on that. So if he says it's more than that, he's probably more right than I am because I'm getting a little older now and I don't wanna admit that I've known the people for 20 and 30 years. So anyway, well, Roger, welcome to the call. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, Ted. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, great. And then where, were you, where are you today? I'm in Salt Lake City, Utah. Okay, I never know where you're gonna be. You might be calling me from Bangkok or Bangladesh. I never know. Yes. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna be in both places end of the month. Oh, my goodness. Well, good for you. You're a traveling guy. I remember the last time I saw you at the airport, you had two bags, one one for overnight and one to carry all your paraphernalia. So that's right. Tell my audience a little bit about you, Roger. Uh, We'll get right into the nitty gritties, but tell people who you are and a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Ted. Uh, This is uh, Roger Salam, and thank you for the privilege. And I'll tell you what I do now, and then I'll tell you about my background. Right now, what I do is I organize and run world-class mastermind events for entrepreneurs, thought leaders, and influencers, both on land and at sea in destinations across the globe that amplify, accelerate, and maximize business and life. Wow. Oh, it's just at sea. I never heard of anybody doing a mastermind at sea. I've been doing that. This is my 11th year, Ted. Wow. I influence the influencers and thought leaders like yourself and gather it's a strict limit of 100 and when i do this des- other destination masterminds land based they're typically about 15 uh, people on average but when i go on once a year i do this uh, mastermind at sea where i take 100 thought leaders and this year is my 11th year it's every year the second week in december and it's by invitation only um, a thought leader event and that's where you talk about wealth creation and different ways to create wealth. It's that's where it's so exciting. And I, and by the way, your listeners, and I've been, I've known you since 2007. I uh, was the first event that you, I met you. I'm and, always making a mistake on those dates, aren't I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good. Yeah. Right, that's good. Your, our mutual friend, Russ Whitney. And as a matter of, as a matter of fact, I saw you, 2007 is when we met as peers, but prior to that, in early 2000, I heard you speak at Russ Whitney's conference, and that's where I bought your program. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. Oh, we go back that far. I think we were using audio tapes. There were no DVDs yeah. or anything. Yeah, you know, uh, it was uh, cassettes. Oh, cassettes. Oh, my <laughs> God. I, can, oh. Wouldn't I, uh, I hope you saved them because it probably, we can probably sell them on eBay. They're probably worth something now because yes. they're antiques. Oh, my <laughs> God. That's wonderful. <laughs> Yeah. Smithsonian might have a copy of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Oh, well, listen, that guy, Russ Whitney, I couldn't brag more about that guy. I'm not going to tell you about one thing, but over a couple or a number of years' time, that guy paid me two million dollars. Absolutely, to, and to work on his program, and what an honor it was. There was sometime fifteen hundred. You remember fifteen hundred, two thousand people in the room. It was and amazing. I was one of those two thousand sat there, and I could not believe when you're talking about. And I'm, I'm, I'm just a newbie in real estate. Oh. And you're saying that all these other people speaking about real estate, that all your, these are all your friends. And then Thurston, remember Thurston? Oh, yeah, yeah, and, absolutely. Um, of course. And then all these people. So he was a talking, president in the Mormon church. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, yeah, amazing. And uh, his, his, I, I just met his son over here, Thurston Jr., and he's in, in the blockchain, very interesting guy. Then you came along when you spoke. And he said, ah, you're going to talk about a program that is guaranteed by the U.S. government. And by the way, that's when I also 
you talk wealth without risk is your friend Chuck Givens. He wrote the book on wealth without risk. Yeah, and, and my mentor, Tony Robbins, interviewed him. That's how I found out about him. And then you are the first one, I said, a program backed by the US government. And the worst thing that can happen is you get this much interest on your money. Yeah, and I said, yeah. I got to buy this program. I, I we had an army of people from these 2000 rushing to the back of the room. <laughs> I could not, I was trying to give you my credit card. I had to fight to well, give you money. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was a good time. But tell us about that. This audience is going to know about me a lot, but let's talk about you because you're pretty darn interesting yourself. So, so tell people about yourself a little bit more and, a little bit more about, I, I, I realized that you uh, do a mastermind on land too, but a lot of people do a mastermind on land, but doing one at sea, I, I, think, that's, uh, I think that's unique. And let, let me tell you why, because anybody that's belonged to a mastermind knows yeah. that when the two days or three days you get together, you hate it when it ends because you don't know if you're going to get the person on the phone and be able to continue because we all get so busy. But I bet there they have a lot of dinners together and they, uh, maybe yeah. even a glass of wine or two together in the lounge or during the during the off time. So wh what's it like at a mastermind? Absolutely. So yes, so that your people know who I am just a little bit. They said I literally my if my I got into the personal development growth business with my mentor Tony Robbins back in the nineties. And I used to be his number one speaker trainer for Tony Robbins. And I literally retired at the ripe old age of twenty nine in Florida. That's how I got to Tampa because that was my last city. Yeah. And uh, I accidentally got onto the internet field in late 97, long before people knew how to spell email. Right. And right there, I saw the internet as the next absolute frontier. I jumped with both feet and took a company from nothing to 2 billion in market cap. Wow, in that's field. So that's where I've made my first wealth. Yeah. But I also, I thought I was set for life because I had so much stock, right. but I'm also one of those people that I am loyal to a fault. It's, I was, the stock was at $50. I wanted to take the stock to hundred. And unfortunately remember when the internet bubble bursted in 99. Oh, that was terrible. terrible. And, and I lost everything. Oh, I, I lost my oh. everything. When the stock market crashed, I, I joke when I sat to speak, I said, when the stock market crashed, I slept like a baby woke up every hour and cried. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's not funny. <laughs> oh, I woke up and cried. Oh my, oh yeah. yeah. I literally, this is how I got into your world of real estate that late night, I can't fall asleep because I'm thinking that God, just give me the rope and get it over with because I've fallen so, it's not a gap, it's an abyss. Yeah. And here I'm flipping through a channel late night just to keep my mind occupied Right. And here comes a late night snake oil salesman on infomercial back then. And guess who that was? And that was Russ Whitney. His infomercial came on and he said, you can make money in real estate with no money, no credit. I said, I qualify. <laughs> <laughs> you qualify. Okay, good. I got it. <laughs> and then right. I, he said, I'm doing a free seminar. I said, I can afford it. Okay, good. All right, good. But what I no. didn't know is it was free to get in, not free to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a credit card? <laughs> they took that. Exactly. $30,000 yeah. later. Oh, my goodness. 30000 Because I knew. Here's another lesson, guys if you're listening, that yes, I was broke at that moment. But I realized the reason it cost 30000 and not $300 is because, what's his name that was uh, the, doing the infomercials? Anyway, so he was selling, the reason he's dollars, I mean, $30,000, not 300 because I knew the biggest difference in your life will come not from information, but having a mentor. Oh, did you get Russ Whitney as your mentor? Wow. As I got... I bought the mentoring program because I realized if oh, I'm going to learn boy. real estate, like oh. I had the reason I did well, because I had Tony Robbins as my mentor. So I said, no, even if I cannot afford it, it was my last credit card and I put it on the line and oh, I got the mentoring. And that's why fast forwarded from there on, I had no money. And in five years, me and my partner owned over 500 houses in the five Tampa Bay counties oh, and, 
and just took off from there with real estate. And that's when I, from Russ Whitney, and that's how I met you. And then 2007, I created my mastermind land. And I, that's the best, anything good and great that has happened to my life is not an indirect, but a direct result of mastermind. And you ask now the difference between the land mastermind and the mastermind at sea. The reason I love it is because this is from a, typically the masterminds were two day format. Now this mastermind at sea is seven days. Wow. This is half vacation by design and half we do the session. So basically when we're at sea equals sessions, when we're at port equals party. Oh. The overall goal for me, for my attendees is don't come to this mastermind at sea for one reason and one reason only is to build quality relationships. Exactly. And I have seen Ted deals that never happened at land, but happens at sea. It has got to do with the mixture of the pina colada and the waves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a good point because it, sometimes it takes a little while to, to not only make the point, but it takes a little while for people to get a feel for each other. Absolutely. They certainly could do that if they could have a, a class together and then maybe dinner together and who knows, maybe the next day another class and whatever. I mean, so, yeah, that's I, the whole thing I, I is like that, what you're saying. Absolutely. The whole thing is that at this point is when they come, they basically, the reason the deal happens is because they let their hair down and this, they have nowhere else to go. You know exactly how far they can go. <laughs> the other end of the boat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So the, and I share with everyone, I said that, Lisa, I've done it over a decade. The less you talk about business, the more business you do, the less you sell, the more you sell It's because this is an opportunity for people to get to know the authentic you when they like you and you being yourself, and the business is just a natural progression to that. Because you have, and you said, good, great. You have a guaranteed program, Wealth Without Risk. And why wouldn't I talk to you and put my money into this program? Because I'm getting returns that I would not get at a bank or anywhere else, and it's guaranteed. And truly, it's not guaranteed by you. And it's guaranteed by the U.S. government. Yeah. So that's all. And you don't have to sell it. It's just a conversation. And every seven days we have you know, dinner together every night. Then we're going to swim with the dolphins together. The more you play. And, of course, then here's the truth, Ted, is that when you have a type personality, these people, you put them together, good things will happen. They don't need me. Yeah. But what I do is I have created processes and uh, systems and created boundaries. When you do that, then non good things, great things happen, breakthroughs happen because of those processes. And it ensures that joint ventures are facilitated. That's why it's a facilitation process. And over the years, I've created, tweaked and tweaked to now that before they even come on the boat, I already know who they are and I'm connecting with them people on land and they're getting their money's worth even before they sign up early enough. And we're having events that are now sold out months in advance because I'm only looking for hundred. And this is the only event that I not only allow, but encourage people to bring their significant other spouse. Because oh, sure, it's sure. a relationship business. And then when they see their partners and now people get to, you bring your spouse, the spouse or significant girlfriend, boyfriend, and now they're having dinner with them and they get to know at a much deeper level. And the conversation is fun. Yeah, absolutely. It's That's fun. why absolutely. Um, I met a guy I work with today, today, literally today, I'm going to be, be talking to in this afternoon that I met on one of your, uh, one of your masterminds. Absolutely. So yeah. I, I noticed a lot of people actually have copycatted you, but nobody has copycatted been able to do the mastermind at sea. I just think that's a, I think that's a whole marvel in itself. Is it complicated for someone to do something like that? No, the, one of the reasons, because look, when I go land destination mastermind, like I went to yeah. Italy, New Zealand, China, yeah. Bangladesh, but those are moving parts. But when I go on a cruise, it's a very controlled environment. Yeah. I don't have to worry about the meals. I don't have to worry about the entertainment. Everything is taken care of. All you're doing, and you've created the fun environment over there. Yeah. And on this, the mastermind of, over here. Yeah. And it's, 
I just announced right now. So I, what they call a lifestyle entrepreneur right now, yeah. it's for the next five years, it's the Americans, half of them don't even have passports. But it's not that they don't want to travel. They're looking for an excuse. They want somebody to hold their hands. And if they could go and travel and make money instead of costing money, then that's a, the best combination. I, every year from now on, I said, I'll take you to five continents in the next five years on Mastermind at Sea. So we're going on a cruise to Alaska next year. The yeah. following year, we're gonna cruise to the Mediterranean. The following year, we're gonna cruise to New Zealand and Australia. The following year, we're going on a cruise to Singapore and China. And the fifth year, we're going on a cruise to Argentina and Galapagos. Wow. So wow. Already, and now I have people that have bought into the membership that, hey, they want to go for the next five years. Because why wouldn't you? If I say that, hey, if you give me uh, dollars and I'll give you $20 back, when do you want that transaction to stop? So, so that's if, if they like the mastermind at C1 and now they're saying, oh, wow, I haven't been to these places and you're going to take me all of everything's take. I just show up. All you do is you show up in that particular city of starting point and everything is taken care of from that moment on. Nice. So nice. This, let me switch gears. Let me switch gears. Right. Yeah. That's great. Hey, I'm your big advocate. You know that. So you can always count on me to help you promote it if you want to. And uh, yeah, uh, but let me let me ask you. You're the. You're really the international man, and you don't ever brag about that. Uh, so I, I want you to, to talk a little bit about that, because I know you were brought up in an unusual uh, place for Americans to even know where it is, yeah. but you uh, come from an unusual background. Not that it means it's bad, it's just that it's different than the American way. And because you then came here and went to UCLA and graduated with honors and so on, and so I, I admire what you've done, but tell people a little bit about your background because Americans, I'm not negative on them in, in any way, but they sometimes a little bit limited and you don't have limits. You just don't have limits. You, you could easily be in Italy today and you could be in Alaska tomorrow and you could be in Bangladesh the next day. And you are sometimes, I, I realize that. I literally, I'll be at the end of the month. So uh, I'm into creating wealth and I do that with tax liens and deeds. And the only reason I do that business is I was a real estate entrepreneur and I really got to, like you did, get my teeth kicked in. And I said, I'm not going to be in the risk business, but I love the way that you live because you do a lot of things that other people don't even dream of. All right. So my career was as a pilot, as you remember. So I got to travel in a lot of places all over the world. But in comparison to you, I'm like a stay at home uh, grandfather. <laughs> no, no. So tell people a little bit about where you came from and how you got this change going on. And I know your family travels too. Uh, seem yeah. to me that, do I remember some of your family were in the diplomatic corps or something? No, they're, no they, they were fortunately, they're all in business. And oh, okay. Yeah, my father, as he said, I'm originally from Bangladesh. And I yeah. came here to go to school. And you're very true that Americans and geography usually don't go together. Exactly. And, they don't and, even know what Kansas is. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So, and then you're funny you ask. Uh, when I first came to UCLA and they would ask, where are you from? And I'd say, Bangladesh. And then first of all, they'd say, hey, oh, you speak very good English. Where did you learn English? <laughs> and I just said, oh, geez. oh my God. <laughs> yes. oh, geez. They go, oh, you speak very, you're from Bangladesh, but you speak very good English. Where did you learn English? I said, oh, it was a long flight. <laughs> <laughs> Please, come on, get here. Come on, give my people some good information. Stop clowning around. This is only a guy with a long flight. Oh my God. He goes, where is Bangladesh? I said, oh, a little bit east of South Dakota. <laughs> Oh, my God. Because oh. they don't know where South they Dakota not, is. What difference know. does it no, make? No. They wouldn't know the history of how Bangladesh and pa Pakistan became countries. They, they don't even know that. Americans don't even know. The British know. We were a British colony for 200 years. Exactly. So, for doing that. So, no, you, in, in that how from there, you say that the reason immigrants do well in this country is because of one thing and one thing only. Americans have taken things for granted. They are oh, spoiled. Oh, so yeah. people who are immigrants, they know what it's like to live in Bangladesh, what it's like to live in India, what it's like to live in Africa. People from all over the world come to this land of opportunity. 
So when they come, it's a displaced people. Anytime you have displaced people, they come and whatever little thing they get, they appreciate an opportunity, they maximize. So while Americans, if you don't travel, you've only read one page of the book. Right. And when you travel, you're reading the whole book. It makes you worldly. It makes you open your mind. You know how other half of the world live. And Ted, I'll tell you a story. When I first kept my first job out of UCLA was in Burbank and my first manager was Irwin and he said something I never forgot. And uh, he was lived in Santa Barbara, had his brand new red Jag convertible. I like, I remember like yesterday and I'm so like impressed. He would come for the weekdays. He had a little apartment in Burbank weekends, go back to Santa Barbara. And when he found out that I'm, that I work there and I'm from Bangladesh, he said, hey, come to my office, I have a story for you. He goes, my son, teenage son, this is, he's got long hair, he's never in his room, is always dark, he uh, had a poster on his door, enter at your own risk, he would never come down to dinner, or any kind of family meals, he's spoiled brat, every time I am, I cannot get his attention, I got so mad one day, I said, hey, you know what? This summer, I'm gonna go send you, send you away for this summer. And my son looked at me. He goes, "Further away from you, the better." <laughs> so oh I'm just God. telling you, so to give you a background of oh. this is the kid, yeah. and he sent his son to Bangladesh for the summer. Oh my God! And it's he's you know, into the Peace Corps jobs. Oh yeah. And Peace Corps. So he goes. Erwin said, "Look now, this is the greatest gift Bangladesh has given to me." My teenage son, when he came back, of course, he flew into LA, LAX, and then yeah. he took a puddle jumper to Santa Barbara. I went to pick him up. Santa Barbara airport was so, like, it's still tiny, but the, back in the days, so tiny. You literally walk to the runway to pick up your luggage <laughs> and yeah. bring. And he said, he came down the, the stairs of the plane and he saw me. Normally, before he left, if he saw me, he would go the other way. This kid, started walking faster. Then he started running and with his bag. And he dropped his bag when he came to me, he jumped like a little kid. He gave me a bear hug and I will never ever forget what he said to me. He grabbed me, gave me a bear hug and he whispered into my ear. He said, dad, I will never complain again. He was a spoiled brat, Santa Barbara, rich kid. Every Christmas gets every toy that he plays with for one hour, then he throws the toys away. And now he went and saw how the other half lived. Wow, what a transformation, huh? And yeah, so it says, I am so grateful that Bangladesh gave my son back. It's the best thing I have ever done, ever done for my son. So tell my audience, uh, give us a few minutes about Bangladesh. We know that people are great. Yeah. Yeah, tell they, tell they, how t- tough it is to grow yeah, up in Bangladesh. Exactly. In, in 1971, there was a civil war. Bangladesh was formerly East Pakistan. Yeah. And in 1947, if you, most people in America may have seen the movie Gandhi. Yeah. And in the movie Gandhi, and he was trying to keep the whole subcontinent together as one country. But that's when... India became two countries, Pakistan and India, and West Pakistan and um, East Pakistan were two two, uh, halves of the same country, like North Korea, South Korea, East Germany, West Germany back then. But here, nowhere in the world where there are East and West, there are 1,200 miles in between. And that was all India. And And all India, sort of an enemy territory in between. And the British knew when they did it, that this probably won't last 25 years because they're divide and conquer. And now, in, with, between West Pakistan and East Pakistan, we didn't have anything in common other than religion because that's how they divided India and Pakistan. There's this huge piece of land. And they said, if you're gonna have two countries, how are you gonna decide, the, how are you gonna divide the territories that we're gonna have referendum in each of the provinces and they decide 
whether they want to be part of India or part of Pakistan. So there was wherever there was Muslim majority, that was on one side became East Pakistan, another was West Pakistan, in the middle was this thing. So now West Pakistan was trying to subjugate East Pakistan. So as if we got rid of the British, now we got another overlord. Oh, and geez. oh boy. Exactly. So it's like for 200 years, the British were the overlord, and now West Pakistan, and they were pilferaging everything. But finally, what was the straw that broke the camel's back is in West Pakistan, Urdu is the language. In Bangladesh, Bengali is the language. And they said, you know what? You cannot speak Bengali anymore. English and Urdu and only Urdu shall be the national language of Pakistan. It's like you, they're telling you not to speak English and you have to speak Spanish from now on. Oh my God. And that's the revolution. It's known as the language revolution in February 21st. Interesting. It's because of Bangladesh, United Nations all over the world on February 21st is known as the language day, as your mother tongue, because this whole country became a country and the fastest time civil war in nine months, we took our freedom back and became, and with the help of India and East Pakistan became Bangladesh and they surrendered and they basically, two million people they killed in that oh civil god. war. Oh, so it was a big war, came. really? Oh my god. Yeah. Yes, oh. and yeah. they were, they were subjugating and oh, atrocities, genocide, uh, and all the whole world was up in arms. That's where the only thing the Americans knew when I came to America, they knew George Harrison's Bangladesh. <laughs> George Harrison. Oh my did god, the, that was it. <laughs> that was it. That's the whole thing. They're like, oh my god, you're from Bangladesh. Let me give you my change, change here. You must be really poor. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, but now it's a, it's not a, it's not a rich country, but it's still third world, isn't it? Or is it? It is, yeah, it is, it is third world. Yeah. There's so much also because of the political inst- instability, but there's people making money at the top level. Opportunities are there because bang, just, just imagine Bangladesh is size wise, a little bigger than Wisconsin. Oh. If you don't know how big Wisconsin is, most people know California. Yeah. It's about one third the size of California. And California is the most populous state in the nation. Right. Do you know the population of California? I think it's. I think they've counted 35, but there's probably another five they haven't counted. Yeah, because so for say 40 million. Yeah. So okay. Bangladesh is one third the size of California, and what is the population of Bangladesh? I have no idea. 160 million. Wow, 160 million. So Ooh. imagine. Imagine in just in Southern California, 405 is bad enough already. <laughs> you have to walk. You can't drive. You have to walk. Oh my God, I love it. If you had Southern okay. California. All right, so tell us, give us one minute because I'm going to run out of time. Give us one minute because you're the international man. And thanks for teaching us about that because I know this about we're making money and all that, but people like to learn these new things and, and they'll have a whole new respect for Bangladesh and, and the English language and Bengali, right? Is that what they yeah, talk about? Bengali. Here? Bengali, whereas Urdu is like in, isn't that the same as in Iran? Or no, Iran? Urdu is actually, as, it's a very much like Hindi. Oh, Hindi like is Hindi. the language oh. of India. Okay. And good. India, and the people can speak Hindi and Urdu and they could understand each other. Oh, okay. I very similar. Good. So, um, so you left there and how did you ever get into a school in Los Angeles, California? How did you do that? And I, I just, I knew that when I was in high school, the I was going to for, go for higher education in the U.S. I applied. I, I went to the American Cultural Center in Bangladesh. The embassy was there. And then applied to about, I think, 20 or 30 colleges over here. And UCLA, I was accepted in many colleges, but my older brother went to UCLA. So when I got accepted at UCLA, he said, hey, go to UCLA. And my neighbor... Uh-huh. Bangladesh, yeah. across the street was Mr. and Mrs. Stewart, and he was the vice president of Union Oil Company, and was my father's friend, and his kids went to UCLA. So when my father asked him that, hey, where should I send my son? And he said, hey, my kids go to UCLA. And of course, my father was biased at that point, and said, oh, yeah. then my son will go to UCLA nice. too. Nice. Of all the ones that I got accepted, I'm, I'm glad that I chose UCLA, but wow. really, 
my UCLA degree and 25 cents ought to get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah, you would. You put it to work. You're one of the workers. Roger, I want you to make me a promise. I want you to make me a promise, okay? The promise is that you'll come back in a few weeks and we learn more about you. Is that Absolutely. a promise? It'd be my pleasure. Okay. Uh, and we want you back, but I want you to close by telling people how they would find out about your mastermind at sea or anything else you want them to find out about. And just to give a, a quick address so we, yeah. we record it and people know about it. Cause I'll get all kinds of calls and emails and say, why did you tell us how to get a hold of Roger? They want to get a hold of you, okay? The easiest way is, is go to mastermindatsea.com. Mastermind, A-T-S-E-A.com. That's the easiest oh, way. Oh, and you'll find out about the next mastermind. We, 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 both, we both said when we start, 30 minutes goes too fast, but you know how this is, we're always limited, but you made a promise now, so you can't get away. I've got your, on tape that you're gonna come back and we're gonna talk more a little bit about Bangladesh, but you know what I wanna know more about on the next one, is let's talk more about creating wealth because you've come up with a lot of different ways of doing things and you've done a lot of things. You made a, some great successes as I guess all of us entrepreneurs that, not all of us, because some of them, some of us didn't, you didn't get to bankruptcy, but I sure did. I I remember that back in 1986. I'll never forget it. That was quite a lesson. Uh, yeah. but you've had these same kind of trials and tribulations. Absolutely, absolutely. And so we need to convey some of that to our, some of our clients because all of our people are creating wealth, but we might teach them to be keep right on creating wealth, but be a little bit on the conservative side. But before I close, I want you to thank you again, and I want you to give us some addressing so they can get a hold of you. Absolutely. So that if it, but you can go to, as I said, mastermind at c.com or rogersalam.com. Salam is spelled S as in Sam, A L A M as in Mary, rogersalam.com. Right. And right. my email is roger at rogersalam. If I can help you in any way, please feel free to email me and I'll be happy to answer. Oh, you're such a special person, really special. And your English really is good, Roger. <laughs> I'll never get over that, the long flight. That was the best one here. No long flight. Okay. Hi, listeners. I would love to know what you guys think of today's episode on Imagine Wealth Without Risk. So make sure you guys leave a rating and a review. 